I'd love if you could touch a bit upon the augmentations that you're taking advantage of mm -hmm. and how those are improving model performance. Mm -hmm. I started off uh, essentially trying to throw everything at the augmentation pipeline. I had rotations, I had shear, I had gain scaling, and then of course, color space scaling. So we had HSV scaling and different ratios. And lastly, I used this mosaic data loader, which would take four images, randomly place them, and then apply all these uh, augmentations at the same time. So augmentation is a tricky thing. I actually discovered that some of the augmentations that I'd applied, even in small amounts, were hurting the results on the Cocoa data set. And a lot of the time, you don't get the satisfaction of really understanding why you get a certain result in ML. So it takes a lot of experimenting, a lot of trial and error. So I've actually toned back the augmentation techniques now. And in the, the latest repository, in YOLO v5, we have a high degree of scaling augmentation. And we use a mosaic data loader, and we do color space augmentation. So the augmentations are done a little bit differently in v5 than in the v3 repo that I had. In v3, I literally upscaled the entire image and pass that in as a batch during training. So one of the downsides of this is that it uses up a lot of memory if you want to scale up your images very large. So in V5, rather than scaling the actual image, uh, we keep the image the same size. So for example, the default training size is 640 pixels. So we input 640 images for every single batch and the augmentation, the scaling is done with an affine transform that'll increase the size of the image or decrease it, um, but it always crops it at the same 640. Um, it'll randomly translate it also, I forgot that. But this is actually, it's a bit of an improvement because it means that every image in the batch can be scaled differently from every other image in the batch, which increases variation. And it also means that you don't need extra memory to train uh, very large images. So when you do the very large image, you're leaving some training performance on the table when you do smaller images. So if you have uh, a batch that's sized to fit into memory that's this big, and then one of your batches is smaller like this, you have a whole lot of GPU memory that's not being used for that smaller batch. So this exploits the GPU memory much better. One interesting nugget in that is, it sounds like you ran a series of experiments to identify which augmentations would generalize effectively to any domain. Mm -hmm. What work do you think is left to be done in ML in augmentation optimization strategies? Because we see in our own tests that augmentation is dependent upon the domain. So it's really tough to like yeah. always use this checklist of augmentations, right? Mosaic generally increases performance. I don't know that we find a, found a place where it decreases performance. If you're building mobile apps, rotation sometimes is really useful because the orientation of the phone to the device to the object is gonna be quite varied. I'm curious to hear if, if augmentation is something that you believe might be contextual to the problem, but you're including it in the training pipeline. How do you think the augmentation portion of training will evolve? Well, this is an excellent question, and I don't think that there's any easy answers. Like you said, there's some domains like satellite imagery where rotation is incredibly important. Uh, and then there's others, for example, like a lot of the Coco data set, for example, where uh, like a lot of the images are the way you usually take them with a cell phone, and they're just not rotated that much. In the short term, the medium term, and probably the long term, I think there's always going to have to be a human hand guiding the augmentation strategy, at least to a certain extent. Of course, there's fully automated methods like auto augment. Yeah, which Efficient Dead also uses for some of their large models. But again, this is a bridge too far for, I think, most organizations to spend the money and the GPU time. These are the two answers, essentially. There's the brute force method. If you can manage it, then more power to you. But if you can't, then, uh, I don't know, there's, there's not quite any easy answers today, uh, other than relying on your own experience and the experience of those around you. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense.